Welcome to episode 39 of Communicast, a communication skills podcast. I'm Scott D'Amico, president of Communispond, a global communication skills training organization. Celebrate the small successes along the way. That's the advice from my guest, Ingrid Christensen, who is the president and founder of Inco International, published author, entrepreneur, an advocate who is passionate about providing equal access to information to everyone, no matter what language they speak. In this episode, we talk about how to develop trust, working through the grind, gratitude, and why you should just say yes and then figure it out. I hope you enjoy. Ingrid, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me on. It is an honor and a privilege, and I'm just really excited for this conversation. I am looking forward to it as well. To kick us off, maybe tell the listeners just a little bit about you, background, your journey, and ultimately, what is it that you are doing today? Awesome. Yes. Well, where to start? I'll try to I'll try to keep it short and condensed. So as of right now, I am a proud mom to a lovely 17-year-old son um, doing all things teenage. And we live in Minnesota, where it's like Antarctica, six months out of the year. <laughs> but we love it and embrace winter as much as possible. Um, I am also the proud um, founder, CEO and founder of an incredible language solutions company, Inco International. And that is really one of the the large, the biggest joys of my life, of course, besides being a mom, is to be able to to bring a voice to those that that don't have a voice and offer language services in over 200 languages. So that's been really, really an incredible part of my professional journey, which has led to um, now I'm a published author of all things in the world. So published my first my first book called The Language of Trust and um, really kind of took an opportunity to dive into communication and how important communication is in developing, nurturing, and repairing trust when necessary. So that's that's what I'm doing. Outstanding. And yes, those communication skills definitely come in handy with a teenager, as I have find, <laughs> found out. I have a 13-year-old uh, mm. boy and a 10-year-old daughter, 10 years going on 18, it seems like. Mm. And the communication skills are definitely important to get your point across. You are in the thick of it. The Absolutely. thick of it. <laughs> Ingrid, what what brought you really? How did you get to this point of language translation services and you're writing a book around the language of trust? How did you get from where you were to here? What was the motivation or the driver behind that? So I think it was, well, it was for sure like a 20 year journey, right? Nothing happens just in an instant. There's a series of single decisions that I made along the way that that got me to where I am now. So um, I think that's really important for people to remember that, um, you know, we don't wake up um, where we are, right? There's a, there's a long, a long life um, ahead of us. So through the journey of working in language services over the past 25 years, a common thread, a common concept just kept coming up when I was talking to people. And it was that of trust. It was that of being a voice for somebody that doesn't have a voice and the intrinsic trust that is within that relationship. Even if you don't know that person, you have to as quickly as possible get into a position of trust. And then I really started thinking, how does trust play even a greater role in my life as a leader, as, as a business owner, as, as a manager, as a supervisor leading this organization. And I thought about the trust that is required for my team to have for me and the trust that I have to have for them, that they're going to go out and, and, and do the best work that they possibly can do. And then I started thinking about this trickle down effect of, of the trust that our clients place in us. I mean, they give us a document purportedly in English, we turn it back in a language that they have no idea what it is. It, it's all Greek to them. And they have to take that document and put it out to the world and trust that it's accurate, trust that it's correct. And so I just kept seeing this repeating theme of trust and trust and trust over and over again. And I started talking to people about it, thinking about it. And I really just came to this fundamental 
belief, if you will, that trust is truly the most important action, verb, emotion that we as human beings need and, and desire in our lives. That sounds right to me. And you know, if I think about trust and probably from my perspective, as I try to boil it down as simple as possible, you build trust as when there is alignment between what you say and what you do ultimately, right? And without that, clients aren't going to feel comfortable putting their, their valuable assets in your hand. Your people might not feel comfortable you're working as hard, putting other things on hold for you or coming to you with ideas or questions or concerns if there is that misalignment between what you say and what you do. So trying to keep those two things in line is a great way to build trust. And I, I love that you talked about how this has been a journey, right? 20 years in the making. A lot of times people see success and you see it a lot more so probably in pop culture, right? A musician that just burst onto the scene or... Uh, an actor or a comedian, it's like, oh, wow, they're this overnight success. It's like, no, they've been grinding and working and, and honing their craft for 20 years. And then because of all of those decisions they've made and all the work they put in, that's when it ultimately broke for them, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think you said a really important word there and it's grind. It is a grind, right? But if you have a bigger picture you have a big goal for your life. You want to lead a big life in all of its fulfillment. We take little baby steps every single day towards achieving those bigger goals. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, you said it, you just hit the nail on the head. Nothing happens overnight. I think every entrepreneur's journey is for sure, for me, the longest marathon that I'll ever run. And I'm not a marathon runner, to be <laughs> me neither. frank. <laughs> Not interested in running into brand. But this journey is, it does feel like a grind sometimes, right? It feels sometimes when you're in the thick of it, it's like, am I ever, ever going to get any traction? Is this ever going to make a difference? But, you know, I think that there's things like, for me, um, in really recognizing the value of gratitude and celebrating the small successes along the way has helped me recognize that, yeah, this has been a 25 year journey. And, there's a ton to celebrate. There's a ton here that we've accomplished. We're not there yet. We're not at the end of our journey. We're well, you know, well on the journey, but but there's a lot to celebrate along the way. It's so important to celebrate those small wins. It really does help keep the motivation and engagement going along the way. So shift, you know, shifting gears a little bit, Ingrid, you know, we've hit on communication a little bit, but when, when you hear this concept or this idea that somebody is a great communicator, What's that mean to you? What what comes to mind when you hear that, that so-and-so is a great communicator? I think that there's a key, few key essential points that a great communicator has. Number one, I think they listen. They communicate first by listening. Once you listen and you feel what somebody is trying to communicate with you, you are best then able to return and reciprocate that conversation, that communication. So let's start by listening. Number two, my number one rule in communication is open and honest. Open and honest communication is the only kind of communication. If it's not open and honest communication, it's not worth your time. You gotta start by listening and you have to start by really committing to having open and honest conversations and communications with people. And sometimes that means getting really vulnerable. Sometimes that means saying things that you don't necessarily want to say. That always means having the hard conversations that you don't want to mm -hmm. have. But those are the conversations that most need to happen in order to really take that communication and that relationship towards trust to the next level. I love what you said there around you communicate first by listening. That, that's really important to note. I want to just park there for a second because there's a couple aspects to that. If you're not really listening to understand, you're just waiting to talk or you're zoning out, thinking about the other thousand things you have to do that day, you're going to miss out on all the important things that that person is saying that can help keep the conversation going and ultimately achieve the goal, whatever that goal may be for the conversation. But also when you are 
really demonstrating that you're listening, where you're, you're focusing on them, you're eliminating distractions, that's going to, I think, perhaps build up some trust or build up some comfort where the person will feel more open to confide in you or to share with you, which will lead to much more meaningful communication. So the idea of you communicate first through listening, very powerful. And then you know, having those open, honest conversations, sometimes those tough conversations, I think uh, Gary Vaynerchuk in his, his last book, 12 and a half, talked about kind candor, right? Mm -hmm. Having open and tough conversations or honest conversations doesn't have to be mean. It doesn't mean you just, you tell someone that they're terrible or things like that. It's just very, having the, the candid conversations, which yeah. hopefully the foundation for that conversation was started months ago. Perhaps if it's around performance at work where you've clearly communicated expectations and along the way you've touched base with people to talk about their progress along the way so it isn't blindsided blindsiding somebody with their performance at work or whatever whatever that is so i think those are spot on two great things for a a strong communicator ingrid as as you're looking at the workplace today you're being a successful entrepreneur building your business working with clients all over the world what are some of the key communication skills that you're seeing as being very important in the workplace or perhaps that you really look for when you're bringing folks onto your team? That is a big topic. I think um, we all know that the workforce is shifting. The way we work is shifting. Certainly post COVID, the whole world has turned upside down and it, I think it's continuing to to tumble and we're continuing to figure out what does this new work world look like? Um, I know in my team, we're very global. Uh, we're an international communications company. So we work in seven different countries and the very nature of the work that we do is to bring a voice to the voiceless. So we are working in 200 different languages every day, all day with that multilingual, multi-global, multi-location kind of um, environment, we have to slow way down. We have to listen so much more carefully than, than I think we would if we were in a monolingual um, environment all in the same same location. But maybe not, maybe not, because this is what I know. And so I'm just talking from my experience, but you know, we have to slow way down. We have to really, really lean into patience when we don't want to be patient. When we want to say, I'm, this is driving me crazy. I just want to walk away is when I feel like we're just on the tipping point of figuring out what's truly going on. When mm -hmm. we have to lean in and just be more patient and just keep on listening because it's the unspoken cues that we listen to, that we're able to hear when we slow down and we really lean into that patience. And it's when we take a moment, sometimes many moments, right? There's many times when we're like, this is just driving me crazy. I don't want to do this anymore. But when you stick in just a little bit longer, it's usually when the truth starts to come and bubble up to the top. A couple of things that that you said there really jumped out to me and you know, really reminded me of some of my favorite expressions. The first one is slow down to speed up. For sure. It's and, and I see that working as you know, Communispa on the company I lead. It's a multi-global, multinational organization where we're working with our clients and our franchise partners all over the world in different languages, but even just with the domestic team. The concept of in your communication, slow down to speed up because if you're just quickly firing off emails, immediately responding to things, maybe not reading things quite as well as you should, it's going to lead to mistakes. And yeah. I was reading an article just yesterday and it talked about one of the one of the benefits of effective communication is you're saving energy. Poor communication is an energy drain because you're having to constantly repeat something rephrase mm. something, re-explain something, deal with back and forth emails. And it just, the frustration that can set in can mm. just pull all of your energy out of you. So taking that time just to slow down 
will really, really help overall the organization feel more comfortable and likely cut back on on costly mistakes that you're going to make with your communication. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you hit on something really important there. I think another thing to remember is that people communicate in different ways and people need to be communicated to and with in different ways, right? In the written form, in the verbal form, in the visual form. Sometimes people need to hear something and think about it. Sometimes people can hear something and, and, and make a quick decision. There's all sorts of different communicators. There's all sorts of people that process content and information in, in a variety of different ways. And I think especially now we are bombarded constantly with stuff coming at us from every single direction. And we need to just take a hot second to slow down and and really think about all this content, all this information coming at us because we're human beings. I don't think we're supposed to be processing all this information so quickly and so fastly. And the other thing that I think is really interesting is this, <laughs> where you work, we communicate on video, right? We communicate mm -hmm. behind a camera. And so there's so much that we can't see. I can't see the small gestures that you're making. I can't, you know, feel the energy of the room. So we have to lean into the other senses that we have as communicators. We have to really pay attention and we have to really just hone in those listening skills more and more. And I don't think that that's going to change. I don't think that the global world is going to change. I don't think that the video connected world is going to change. I don't think that the remote work world is going to change. I think we're just going to be, I think this is the way we're going to be. And we're going to have to keep figuring out ways to communicate. I, I agree. I don't think we, we are going back fully to the way things were. And we are going to be with in-person and virtual and phone and email and text and TikToks and this and that. <laughs> so many different <laughs> things. And, you know, one of the things you mentioned earlier was really listening for perhaps what's not being said. And it goes back to this idea of we listen with our eyes and our ears. A lot of it's going to come through just watching somebody and on video, you're going to pick up some of it, but you know, I might not be able to see that underneath your desk, your fists are clenched because you're so frustrated with me right now, but you can pick up on other things, just you know, small facial cues, uh, how long of a pause somebody set, has before they speak. Is it a lot longer than normal? Maybe you've upset them. Maybe they really are thinking because it was a contemplative question. So slowing down and really listening with the eyes and the ears, fantastic skills, especially in today's global, interconnected, in-person, virtual blended type of world. And to add that, you don't know if there's some sort of an internet glitch. I was on a conversation yesterday and I thought I said something really funny and there was no response. And I was like, oh. Maybe it wasn't very funny, but it was just that the internet had glitched and we lost each oh, other for that. a moment. So, Ingrid, as you think about your career success and throughout your journey, if you had to say drill it down to one, maybe two key communication skills that really have helped you to be successful and get you to where you are today, what would those skills be? Just two. Um, well, I think that it all comes down to number one, trusting yourself. You cannot even begin to trust anybody else until you trust yourself. You can't feel confident in your skin unless you trust yourself. You can't feel competent. You can't present your skills. You can't have a, a meaningful connection. There's so many things that are with outside of your grasp that you're not able to reach if you don't trust yourself. And I think that even though it's not a specific communication skill, mm -hmm. I think that we really, really need to look inwards and figure out how can I trust that I know that I'm doing a good job? How can I trust that I'm competent? How can I trust myself enough to show up in confidence? How can I trust myself to show up as a leader? How can I trust myself to stand in front of people and communicate 
where I need the team to go? How can I trust myself to lay out a vision for this company that I need people, strangers sometimes, to take with me so that we can go on this journey together? So I think first and foremost, it, it really comes back to trusting the self. And once we, I'm not going to say nail that, I was going to say nail that, but once we figure out how important it is, because I think that trusting ourselves is a lifelong journey. You know, we, we, we tell ourselves a million things uh, every minute about why we can't do something about how we're not good enough or something or, you know, the terrible, ridiculous things that we tell ourselves all day. So I do think that it's a, it's a constant journey to really lean in and and gain trust and figure out how you can present yourself in an, in a trusting manner. So that's probably first and foremost. And the second most important thing is, I'm going to go back to it again. I think it's, It's open and honest communication and making a true commitment to not leave anything unsaid. Don't leave things on the table. You you have to open it up. You have to open up the conversation. And I think that's easier once you trust yourself to be able to do that. But I think those two things go hand in hand. One of uh, the prior guests that I had made a great point around most conflict, whether it's in an organization or at home, can be tied back to a conversation that did not happen. Conversation that probably should have happened, but it didn't. That's where most conflict stems from. So I like this idea. Just don't leave things, uh, put them on the table, get them out there so you can't address them and work through them. And this idea of trusting yourself, I hear a lot about it today with the concept of imposter syndrome where people feel that, you know, they're not worthy. They shouldn't be here. I don't deserve this job. Am I good enough? How did I get here? And, you know, I think for me, one of the ways that I've worked through that to really try to trust myself, whether it was going for a promotion or even doing something like this, starting this podcast was, you know, just to look back at tangible examples where I succeeded. You know, I was at my prior company for over a decade And I worked in a number of different positions from individual contributor up to senior leader, worked with, gosh, I don't know how many different bosses throughout the time. So I'm like, okay, I can work with different people. It wasn't just like I had one boss protecting me. I can do different things. I tried different roles. I moved throughout the organization. Same thing here. So as you go back, think through your career, think through your life and find those examples of where you did something similar Mm-hmm. celebrate those small wins like we talked about earlier. I think that can help to build up that internal trust to make those mm-hmm. those next steps or next decisions. Yeah, I mean, you just nailed that on the head. The imposter syndrome is, I think for me, it was like a cloud of shame that lived over me. I thought until I was able to verbalize it, I thought I am the only one that feels like a fraud. I'm going to be caught. People are going to say she's a fraud. She has no idea what she's doing. And until I was able to verbalize, and I was so afraid. I remember specifically when I spoke those words out loud and the woman that I was speaking with said, we all feel that way. That's imposter syndrome. And I had never heard of it before. And it just, it, it kind of came on like, like a bright light. It's that which we are most ashamed about when we speak it out loud it like shines the brightest light on this dark cloud that it, we feel like we're, we should be so ashamed over and it just dissipates. It goes mm-hmm. away. Once you speak it out loud, it doesn't carry any, any, any power over you anymore. And so I think, you know, it goes back to trusting yourself enough to, to speak those deep truths, to speak those deep, um, those deep, you know, shames that, that we feel like we need to keep hidden from people and, and people want to know because we're all facing the same thing. Nothing Mm -hmm. that I'm feeling is nothing that, that you haven't felt a million times. We've all in one way or another, you know, for the most part, gone through the same range of emotions. Um, but I think it's just really important to, to recognize that you, you're not crazy. (laughs) You're what you're feeling is, is valid and it's okay to talk about. It's important to talk about. And and I remember having this conversation with a 
good friend of mine at, at my prior organization. We had worked together for years and he was in the process of leaving the company, going on to a new, new company to lead a big division there. And we both had this conversation because we were kind of in the same boat around, gosh, what if, what if I'm only successful here, right? There's something about this place that makes me successful and I'm just going to fail elsewhere. So I think having those conversations, then seeing people in your circle that have gone on to have those successes and know that, yes, it absolutely is normal to feel that way. And it's <laughs> people go out and they do it and they they get those big wins. Mm -hmm. Ingrid, you have such a great conversational style about you. It's so you're so easy to talk to. You, who has been someone maybe that has helped to influence your communication style from throughout your life or career? What did you maybe take from them, tweak a little bit, and and make it your own? Hmm. Well, um, I, I likely my my fam. Thank you, first of all. Thank you for for that that compliment. Um, it's. Uh... I've never been complimented on my conversation style. So I appreciate that. Um, I, I would probably say my family, right? That's where we all learned how to have um, conversation, uh, family dinners. Um, I my, my mom's side of the family is very different from my dad's side of the family. Um, my mom's family is very um, New York and loud and very opinionated. My dad's family is very Midwestern, grew up on a farm, a little bit more quiet, um, subdued. So I think navigating my my way through through both forms of um, communication and conversation definitely probably shaped shaped my my abilities. And um, I think listening and learning, learning from other people, right? I I'm I'm addicted to learning, just like I think a lot of a lot of people are, and in really trying to figure out how can I become a better version of myself every single day. And so, reading, uh, reading books, listening to podcasts, you know, just really listening and and leaning in, and and trying things out and trying to become a a better. Like I said, my my only goal in life is to become a better version of myself every day. You uh, bring up a great point around the dinner table conversation. And you know, I, I realize I'm very fortunate to be in a position where I, I have my family and we have the ability to all to come together most evenings uh, to have dinner and talk. Same thing growing up, growing up in the Midwest, having that where that was important thing where at the end of the day, we all sit down, have dinner, talk. It is a fantastic training ground for communication skills, both to one, just practice different skills, listening, asking open-ended questions, and for me, modeling skills now for my kids around how to effectively communicate in a positive way uh, and just really have that dialogue and ultimately listen to people. It's not not always the most exciting or enthralling conversation. Uh, we lead relatively boring lives, but just having that connection, demonstrating to my family that I really am listening and I value what they have to say, great way to model skills. And then it just ultimately helps me continue to be, as you mentioned, kind of a better version of myself to continue to improve. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a little uh, unorthodox maybe, but one of my all time favorite activities is sitting usually at an airport bar or a hotel bar and having random conversations mm -hmm. with strangers. It is one of the best ways to get a sneak peek into the lives of individuals that you're probably never ever gonna run into again. But it is um, it is just mind blowing the conversations that you can have if you're just willing to say hi. Mm -hmm. And you never know what you're going to learn good, bad, or ugly um, from some of those conversations. But oftentimes you might pick up an interesting tidbit, whether it's a, a random piece of trivia or knowledge, or honestly just learning something very fascinating about the industry in which they work or where they're traveling. You might get a new tip. Uh, having those conversations, it's for me as somewhat of an introvert, is challenging to do that. And I try to put myself in those uncomfortable situations as much as I can. Uh, but yeah, you always pick up something fascinating from those. 
Absolutely. And I'm not, I'm not a super extrovert either. I think I'm somewhere in the middle between introvert and extrovert, but there's something about a conversation with somebody in a random place, a random stranger that just, just really does wonders for the soul. Ingrid, as we are wrapping up here, yeah. what, what piece of advice would you have for somebody, whether maybe they're fresh out of school, right? High school or college, they're entering the workforce. Maybe they're going to start their own business or even their mid-career. You know, they're mid-level manager, 20 years in, they're just ready to completely take a left turn. What mm -hmm. advice would you have for them around communication skills and the really the important part that they can play in their career success? Say yes and figure it out. I think all too often we put up barriers because we're afraid to say yes. We can't figure out how we could possibly do something, how something could possibly um, occur in our lives, how all the different pieces would fall together at just the right time for things to turn out. But you know what? In my life, I've learned that you say yes and you figure it out along the way and most of the things fall into place. Most of the pieces come together and it all works out. Always, no, that's life. Things are not always supposed to work out. You're supposed to learn and you're supposed to fail along the way. But say yes, figure it out. And everything, that I, this is not my, this is not my term. Marie Forleo said it, but mm -hmm. everything is figure outable. There is not anything likely that we are ever going to do in our lives that we can't figure out that we really want to do, right? Like if I really wanted to build a rocket ship and go to the moon, like I don't personally have those skills, but I, I know how to Google really well. And I know how to find people that I could bring to the team to help do that. Right. That's not one of my personal mm -hmm. goals, but the thing is that nothing is, is unattainable. You just have to say yes and figure it out along the way. Say yes and figure it out. Everything is figure, figure outable. Was that what it was? <laughs> yeah, I, I do really like made up words as, as a communication person. I know that we're not supposed to make up words, but, um, and that's not one that I, that I'm, that I made up uh, again, Marie Forleo, I believe made that up. Everything is figure outable, but, um, one of, you know, one of our themes this year is another, uh, word that I made up, which is stick with itness. And I know it's, you know, combo mm -hmm. of, of a bunch of, a bunch of different words, but there there's beauty in creating words and you say yes, and you figure it out along the way and communicate in a way that you want to be communicated with. Don't leave things left unsaid, trust yourself, um, lean in, over communicate, open and honest communication and everything, everything will work out in your favor. That much I do know. I could not agree more. Ingrid, thank you so much for joining me today. Really enjoyed our conversation. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. It was a very great pleasure being here. I appreciate it. Take care. A special thanks again to my guest, Ingrid Christensen. Ingrid's points about developing trust are spot on. For a business to function at its best, it is important to establish and maintain trust both internally with employees as well as externally with clients. And you do this by creating alignment between what you say and what you do. If you are looking to improve your communication skills, be sure to subscribe to Communicast so that you can continue to learn from my guests with each new episode. And if you've found value in the show, leaving us a rating or review would be appreciated. Thanks and have a great day.